Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. So in today's video we'll be covering bank deposits in uh, Business Central. So firstly what is a bank deposit in BC? Well it's um, just a, a deposit of funds to one of our bank accounts. Um, so before we jump into the bank deposit screen there's just a bit of configuration which we'll run through. So there's a small amount of config to do um, and what I'm going to do is just go to my search here and I'm going to search for a page called sales and receivable setup. Um, and in this page, if I just scroll down a little bit, we have the bank deposits section, um, which basically allows me to set up a bank deposit numbers um, in this particular field. So if I drop down on here and just say select from full list, it takes me to the number series table where I can define a numbering sequence to be set up against my bank deposit functionality in BC. Um, so that's the same as um, the numbering series setup that we've got in uh, one of our other videos. Feel free to watch that one at your leisure. Um, so the other field that I have here is post bank deposits as lump sum. And this is a Boolean, which I can flag as yes or no. Um, and this basically controls the postings that occur off the back of the um, bank deposits. Um, so we can define this on the bank deposit card itself. So um, we can leave that one marked as no for now, but I can show you that on the bank deposit card itself. So now that all that's configured, I'm going to come back off the sales and receivable setup page and let's go into cash management and bank deposits. Um, so this takes us to the bank deposit screen where we can set up um, and add a new bank deposit for one of the bank accounts that we have in our Business Central environment. So I'm just going to click new up at the top here and I'm going to move down to the bank account number and I'm going to select my Lloyd's current account. So the numbering sequence has come in automatically here based off the numbering sequence that we just went through on the sales and receivable setup page and the bank account number I've defined as my Lloyd's bank account. So this just looks up our bank accounts table in Business Central and I can go in and say it's the Lloyd's current account that this bank deposit is for. So then I can come in and set a total deposit amount. So for example, I can say 1000. And after I've input the total deposit amount of 1000, you can see that there's a difference of 1000. So what is this field? Well, the difference field is basically looking at the lines area below here. And it's just telling me that there is a difference of 1000 pounds for me to assign in the line section of this particular bank deposit. So we'll see that decrease as we begin to add lines in the line section of the bank deposit in a moment. So we also have a posting date, which is just the, the date which this transaction occurs. Um, here is the post as lump sum function here, as we saw on the um, the sales and receivable setup page. As mentioned, you can define this per bank deposit or you can set up um, globally for all bank deposits to be posted as a lump sum. And basically all this does is it controls the postings that occur on the bank account ledger entry. So we can choose to post as lump sum where the £1,000 that we post here will be posted as a single entry or if we unmark that, they'll be posted as individual entries as per the lines that we have defined in the line section here. Um, so we can also set a document date against the bank deposit. Again, it's similar to the posting date, but it's just a, a different date for reference. And we can set dimensions up against the bank deposit. So these are my two global dimensions in this demonstration system. I have department and customer group. And I can define dimensions here on my header of my bank deposit and they are all transferred to the lines on that particular bank deposit if we want to do that. So I can define global dimensions using these two fields. 
So I also have a currency code field, which is grayed out. So this is a currency code blank, which basically means it's in a local currency, which is GBP in this BC environment. But if your bank account was in a foreign currency, you would see that flow through from the bank account card to this field on the bank deposit. So what we can then do is start filling in the line section. So if I drop down on the account type here, you can see the different ledgers that I can post to. So I can say I'm posting um, the deposit into my general ledger, customer vendor, bank account, fixed asset, into company partner or employee ledgers. So for now, I'm just gonna pick um, customer. And what this means is the account number field shows me my customer list so if I say select from full list it takes me to my customers so I'm just going to pick a datum corporation here and you can see I can change the description so I can overtype here if I want to I can change the document date at line level the um, document type is set to payment by default and I've got a document number reference here as well and basically within the credit amount I can set the um, amount of the payment and sorry let's just set that to 500. So I can add a number of different line types in here but I'm just going to add a vendor line in here and again the account number looks at the vendors table here because I've selected vendor in the account type. So I'm just going to select Vendor 10,000, who is Fabricam Incorporated. And you can see here the document type has defaulted to refund because BC is assuming that it's a bank deposit from a vendor. So we're getting a refund. And I'm just going to enter 500 in here as well. And you can see we have the total of our deposit lines, which is 1,000. Um, so it's just the sum. Of outlines here and you can also see now that the difference is now reduced to zero and that's because we've got the £1,000 from our total deposit amount fully accounted for in the line section of our bank deposit. So if I change this to 499 for example you can see the difference changes to 1 GBP. And obviously in order to post the bank deposit we have to fully allocate all of the total deposit amount. So we can't leave some of it unallocated um, because it, 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 wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be allowing us to post them. Um, so I've got some functions here in the lines area. I can add a new line or I can delete a line. I can also choose to apply entries here if I want to. So at line level here on my vendor line, I have a 500 GBP refund. And if I want to, I can choose apply entries. And sorry, let me just pick a reference number there. And when I say apply entries, it brings up all of the um, um, entries on my vendor ledger against vendor 10,000 Fabricam Incorporated that are open. So I can apply entries here if I want to. And I can do the same for my customer. And that will bring up the customer entries for customer 10,000, a datum corporation. So you don't have to apply at this point, but you can if you want to. And just finally on this section, you can use the account card as a, as a bit of a shortcut, which will take you directly to the account card for the line that you're on at that point in time. So this is taking me to customer 10,000. I can do the same for vendor 10,000. And I can use the account ledger entries to view the ledger entries for the line that I'm on. So this time I was on the vendor line. So it's taken me to the vendor ledger entries for account 10,000 Fabricam Incorporated. And um, I can also review the dimensions on these lines. So you can see the dimensions have come through from the vendor card and here on the customer card. But as mentioned, I do have access to these two fields here, which I can use to globally set the dimensions for all of the lines on my bank deposit. Or, of course, I can come in and I can change the dimensions at line level there if I need to. 
Okay, so once we're happy with um, all of our um, bank deposit lines here, what I can go ahead and do is say post. And it will just ask me, um, do you want to post the bank deposit? So I'm going to say yes. And what happens is, is the screen changes to a posted bank deposit. So in the same way you have unposted sales invoices and posted sales invoices, you have bank deposits, but you also have posted bank deposits as well. So here is the bank deposit that we've just posted. It's uneditable now, um, so I can't um, um, change it, but I can if I want to use the undo posting function here to undo that particular bank deposit if I made a mistake somewhere. So what are the implications on our other ledgers? Well, if I go to our bank accounts here and I come into my Lloyd's account, I can review the balance, which is now 900 GBP, and I can see the two payments here with the relevant reference numbers, so G02002 for a Datum Corporation and the 500 um, GBP there, and we've got the refund from Fabricam Incorporated for 500. Now remember we had the post as lump sum tick box unpopulated, so that's why we've got two entries here. If we had that populated so it was marked as a yes, you would only see one entry for a thousand here on my bank ledger. So we posted to customer and vendor accounts, which obviously means it's posted to those ledgers too. So if I go to my customer ledger, I come in to my balance here for customer 10,000. I can see our payment with the same reference number for 500. And of course, if I go to my vendors, I can go into vendor 10,000's ledger entries and I can see my refund with my reference number and the amount of 500 as well. So that is a quick overview of the bank deposits functionality. I hope you guys found it useful. Thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll see you on the next one.